this is a short video on mutable environments where we learn where we finally learn the API on uh, manipulating environments. So uh, recall that there are going to be two uh, constructors and one uh, selector or accessor. The constructors are putting, which updates an environment uh, by defining a variable x and assigning it to, to a value v. And um, the push operation, which takes uh, an environment and a key value and creates a new uh, environment called E2. Finally, look up that given a, an environment, when you do E of X, that should go through all the frames, finding the nearest um, definition of X. So if you recall uh, this slide with uh, the box on the right hand side shows you how you could recreate this diagram using uh, environment operations. So first, assuming the memory is empty and has an initial environment at E0, what we do is first we set the X assigned to 3, secondly we assign Y to 5, uh, then we create uh, handle h1, in this case in the left hand side, uh, and that will create this box, and we would initialize z assigned to 6, so it would be initialized with just z assigned to 6, and then we add x to 7, so we would get that. Uh, and then with, push up, with the push operation, where you initialize with m assigned to 1, you would get this box without the y, so you just get a box with a single binder, m assigned to 1. And finally, with the put operation, you can add uh, y colon 2. So all of this will be stored in a heap, which we call the memory, since it only contains frames. Uh, frames are the values of the heap. Uh, and the references, handle 1, handle 2, handle 0, and handle 0, are what we call environments. So the environment is the reference to the first frame. Um, so the constructors that we have, um, this one you won't use, it's just for your uh, understanding. If we want to allocate, uh, the, we can take the, the first, let's say this frame. Uh, we can initialize it by saying that we would perform a root allocation. This would return an EFF, as you might remember. So the result is the, mem the, um, the, result is the, the reference, so handle zero, and um, the state would be the memory, the base memory, the memory that only has a single frame uh, pointed by uh, this variable. And then if I want to uh, assign a put, it's actually quite easy. What we do is, because if you recall, in our last lesson we learned about heap put. Uh, so what we do here in environment put is it takes a memory, it takes the reference where you want to uh, add the key value, and this is the key and this is the value. So what you do is you take heap and you get um, the frame associated with the key E, which in this case is env. What that returns is a frame, and then you update the frame with key value, and that returns a new frame, which you then use heap put to update the contents of the memory, and what that whole thing returns is the new memory. Okay, so if I want to write this code, uh, but this is what the thing does, if you want to understand it deeply, but what I want you to really focus your atten attention on is if you had a slide that showed you this, uh, you would be able to recreate it using uh, two puts. So here is the first one that cor corresponds to this line and this outer one corresponds to the second one. Of course, you could put it into two different lines as well. That would also be correct. Uh, but because the environment put always returns a new memory, you can chain these two together and it would be fine. Um, now for a constructor, let's say you wanna do um, a push. What the push does, it takes the memory, takes the new, takes the old environment, the parent environment, takes the key and takes the value, v. So what the implementing push, the only thing it does is first we create a new environment, 
this is the same as uh, frame push, if you recall. Uh, so we're initializing a frame with the parent environment and the key value. So it's the same as frame push. Uh, and then what we do is we allocate. So the result of heap lock is going to be the, that pair that contains the new memory that contains h2 and the sec the result is going to be h2 so if you have this code here the way you would you would write it is first line represents this instruction and then what that returns is two things right the pair so we always uh, break it down into two variables so that's why we have e1 here would be the left hand side so the the um, E1 is the result and M2 is the state. So ignore, sorry, ignore left hand side and right hand side. Just remember that an EFF contains two things. It contains the result, which is the H2, E2, sorry. And it contains the state, which is the new memory and M2. So if be, after that you want to perform a put, you should call this line. Okay, so just to recap, whenever you have a put operation that corresponds to these three lines of code. Okay, and whenever you have a, a put, it's a single line of code. Right, okay. So then what I show you here on the left is just a sequence of all the code that realizes this diagram. Okay, so it's just a rehash. And one way of writing that code is by calling all these functions right here. Uh, feel free to step through and see what's going on. Okay, so hopefully nothing too um, surprising. And finally, the interesting function, which is uh, lookup. And again, what you have to do is you have to recursively iterate over all the frames that are connected. So you try to see if it's in the current frame. If it's not there, you have to look at the parents frame. If it's not there, you have to look at the grandparents frame and so on. So what you do is your key and value, you have uh, three parameters, the memory, again, the heap, the key, uh, the key of, uh, sorry, the, the handle of the, that represents the environment. So the key that contains a frame. So this would be the, the initial, the initial environment where you start with, and then, um, the variable that you're looking up. So that is to say E represents env and var represents X. Okay. And mem is always the parameter you have. So then first thing we do, we get the frame associated with E, right? And then we get the parent frame and we get the result of performing a get. So a get may fail. Uh, and if it fails, it returns false. So we check if the result is defined. So if, if the variable is defined in the, in the frame of our FRM, and if that's the case, you return the result. Otherwise, you check if the parent is defined. You check if, uh, you know, if you've hit the root or not. So in this case, you do have a parent. So if you have a parent, what you do is you recursively call, obtain the, the environment of the parent and check if the parent contains that variable. Okay. Uh, otherwise, you've reached the root and the variable is still not there. So you just throw out an error so that you guys have an easy error message. Uh, that's basically the code. It's very simple, as you can see. It's just a recursive function that, again, is iterating over um, the sequence of frames that are defined in the memory. Uh, and the key it uses is env, so it's double entry. First entry is env, and the second entry is x. Okay, so if I, wanna, if I wanted to write e of x, um, in this case e2, and I want to look up the value y, what I do is this code uh, and all of these checks they are uh, regarding this code so this uh, heap so again the visual the diagram uh, and finally there's this easy way to parse memory which is you can use parse mem and you can give a textual representation of the of the code and that will produce the heap and all the handles and all the frames all correctly so this slide is just showing you that um, okay, and in the in the today's lecture exercise, I will include this code. I okay, hope you have a good one, and see you Friday.